All right, YouTube Repo Man 64. You see what I'm on? Yep, I'm on JBL. All right. So, when is the rapture? We can't at this point, and from all the YouTube videos I've watched today, narrow it down to a day and hour. Um, but we know we're in the season. Now, this video is for all three, the bride, the tribulation saint, and the Jew. Those going to hell, you've made a horrible choice. Uh, nothing's going to help you. Uh, but the you want to know what feast you're going home on. And what's ironic about it is how it actually lines up. <clears throat> I kind of had to wait until the second. They they just now spotted the new moon. Uh, Wackadoodle Simone had a, 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 he's made like 75, <laughs> he's made a couple of videos today because he's excited. Will made a video um, <clears throat> over at Worship and Watch. And Tony, the Cataclysm Tony Early made a video. Just all are making videos. And Steve Fletcher made a video finally after a little while. I guess he's on vacation here in the United States. He's down in Yucatan. Mexico and he's up here on vacation and he said something and this is what I'm talking about where iron sharpens iron and we work together we hear what other people are saying and it leads us down a path and uh, to all of you who have sent me emails and comments and discord and everything about Captain Kelly um, making more comments Okay, that was a huge boom. Are we getting bombed? I am in Middleburg. They're probably shooting Tannerite. But that was big. It actually shook the building. It shook the secret broadcast cave. Um, so I don't really concern myself with anything he says anymore. Uh, and it's unfortunate because we should all be working together. We all carry pieces of these puzzles. Uh, I am not... I, I believe he's saved. I'm not going to say he's not. Um, I believe, though, that he might be a tribulation saint uh, because of the comments that he's made. Uh, he rails against um, uh, people who say that it's not a salvational issue. Well, it's not. I mean, by definition, when you say that, you're basically saying everything is a salvational issue. And there's only one thing that's a salvational issue, and that's denying the Holy Spirit. He's working inside of you or trying to, and you're ignoring it. And um, you're going against that. Jesus Christ is the only way. Uh, everything else we do becomes a work. And if you think that, uh, like, he was gargling something. I I, I couldn't even watch him for, for, for very long at all. Uh, he was gargling out something about, He's the one that God sent, and he's him and his posse are all going to heaven together. And I hate to break it to you, but if you're going to heaven as a bride, uh, you're going to have to deal with all of us that you disrespected out here in YouTube land. So I don't want to get too much into it. It's just, uh, and I, I really, I, the comments, remember who I am, <laughs> what I am. I took the name Repo Man 64 because I was concerned that uh, if I took a different title name, that one of you out there would have recognized me. I have repossessed thousands of cars. I am uniquely qualified uh, to repossess, uh, not because I'm a tough guy at all. Um, as a matter of fact, in all the years that I repossessed, I only had one a confrontation with three good old boys and i was holding my own with two of them but i lost the fight blood everywhere to the third one that came up behind me and hit me over the head with a bottle but that being said the reason i was so successful is because i was able to negotiate it's not because i'm tough like i said the physical uh, was rare um i could hold my own Two of them. I, I lost that fight on the third one with the third one getting me. I should have been paying attention about what was going on behind me. But um, so I say that to say that um, rattling me and uh, making uh, unbiblical comments on whether or not somebody is saved 
uh, that's God's job. I would stay as far away from that topic as possible. You might say that uh, based on what somebody's saying, they appear to be a tribulation saint. Like I said, I work with a guy. He brought me another verse. He brings me a verse every day trying to prove to me that you have to do stuff. And every single verse that I read to him, a bride will view that same verse as he views where oh, you, if you don't do this, you're not going to heaven. And I'm like, that's not what it says. It's, it's clear as a bell that it says that if you're truly saved and the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, you're actually going to do that. It doesn't say I have to do that to hold, maintain, keep, reserve anything to do with salvation. It has nothing to do with it, but I can't, I can't get into his head. And so I tell him now we're friends and everybody in the back room knows that if we show up back there together, uh, he is going to come at me. I don't come at him ever. Tribulation saints come at people. Uh, they try to prove, you know, me and me, if, if all he, and, and I heard him make this comment, all those other YouTubes, just, just unsubscribe for them and just subscribe to me and I'll get you to heaven. And I'm just like, the audacity of this guy. What are you talking about? Your channel literally represents 0.01% of the amount of people that are going to be raptured. The amount of people that will be raptured under the grace of Jesus Christ will be 153 million. And then all the children on top of that. And I'm, I'm hearing that we have a little bit over 2 billion children under the age of accountability. So you're talking about a huge, massive group. Uh, your little channel, my little channel, we're just here to leave behind something so that the tribulation saints can know what happened. And that's basically why I make my videos. It is, it is the stored up grain of the seven years of good. This is the seven years of bad are coming and there won't be any more outpouring of the Holy Spirit like it's been going on for the last seven years. There's only going to be us and our videos uh, guiding them. And I believe that's what the stored up grain is, it's all of our videos. So all that being said, um, Captain Kelly uh, doesn't, doesn't mean anything to me whatsoever. So let's share the screen, get past that. And I'm gonna show you why I think the rapture is going to happen tomorrow in Israel at sunset, Israel time, or the following day, uh, it, sunset is real time. And we'll see, obviously, we're going to see if it happens or not. Now, God, it, it, he doesn't have to do anything. But in order to bring the Jews to jealousy like he said he would, this event has to happen when they think it will. Let me get that across clearly enough for everybody to understand. God is going to perform this rapture on two days, one day. He's going to re he, this rapture is going to occur at the last trump on the Feast of Trumpets. The Jews call it a two-day feast. The Feast of Trumpets is actually a one-day feast. Rosh Hashanah is a two-day feast. This is why Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in the day? He found out that his best friend, Lazarus, had died, and then he sat still for two days. The reason he did was he was giving us a, a nugget of information that we, once you put it on to a timeline, makes perfect sense. But how does he do that and maintain the true calendar? Now, yes, I believe this is the true calendar. And, and it's okay if you think it's the sliver moon. That's fine. It's definitely not the full moon. That's absolutely redonkulous, and I'm going to show you why. Uh, but right now, let me move my picture up out of the way here. Can I move? Yeah. Okay. Now, you don't see my picture covering everything, but I do. All right. So October the 4th at nightfall became October the 5th right here. They are starting Feast of Trumpets. Feast of Trumpets being a one-day feast, but they said it's two. They will blow the last trump at sunset on October the 6th. This also correlates with Mary's ceremony. Seven days, she remember when a woman gives birth to a male child, she's unclean for 40, but there is a ceremony she has to perform. Whatever that ceremony is, 
she happens to be at the temple performing this ceremony of cleansing on the seventh day. After this, at sunset right here, the last trump, according to the Jews, October the 6th, at nightfall, we know what happened on October the 7th. Now, of course, this correlates with Jesus being named. Are we all not going to get a new name when we get to heaven? Yes. And circumcised, meaning that all sin is cut away. What will happen to us? We will get new bodies, and all of our sins, our bodies, are covered by the blood of Christ. Our sins are covered by what Jesus did on that cross. That and that alone, no works, just that and that alone. At nightfall on the 6th, it becomes this day. So technically, not technically, I would say yes, Mary just happened to be at the temple performing her seventh day cleansing of her seven and 33 days. And as soon as the sun set, she had Jesus named and circumcised. He was born, I'm sorry, he was um, named and circumcised at nightfall on October the 6th, becoming October the 7th. How incredible is it that that lines up with what the Jews are calling the Feast of Trumpets, a two-day feast where they will blow the last long trumpet on October the 6th. I just want the bride, the Jews, and the tribulation saints to know what day you're actually going home. Now, Steve Fletcher made a video, blew my mind. I've heard this before. I didn't quite put it together in my head until Steve Fletcher said it. And Steve Fletcher's right. We are not required to appear before God on trumpets. We are not requ uh, required to appear before God on Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. We are all men, women, children, including strangers in the land, are all to appear on tabernacles, being there, and we've all been watching. We have all been watching uh, this period of time very, very intently. And being there when that la up until that last shofar is blown at nightfall on the 6th, becoming the 7th, this is the feast that we are to be there. Tabernacles. That's the only one. So how it lines up is absolutely phenomenal. It actually blows my mind. When I was uh, driving to work today, I was like, wait a second. And then Steve Fletcher had that view. I was like, oh, that makes sense. Iron sharpening iron. Is Steve Fletcher right about the full moon? I don't think so. But I'm not going to tell you or question his salvation or say silly things like, oh, he's had the Holy Spirit for 40 years. How come he doesn't know this? But that's just, it's just, it's literally pride what, what I hear. Captain Kelly saying, all right, as you know by now, I got this off of another watchman. Sorry, I didn't get the last of your, uh, the last of your name. I didn't notice that. Another watchman? I don't know. I think it's another watchman thinking out loud, I, I believe is his channel. I uh, like uh, stuff that he puts out. But like I said before, I don't necessarily, I, I'm stuck with the timeline. I think the timeline is accurate. But I don't think it's a salvational issue if you don't think it is. I just think it's cool that if you say we're going on the Feast of Trumpets and I say, hey, guess what? It's actually the, the last day of Tabernacles. It's the day that Israel was invaded. It's exactly one year later, one year later to the day. How is that even a, a thing? And then I'm going to show you here in a moment why the anybody using a sliver or full moon is actually wrong. But how does God take us on the correct time and yet observe the Jewish time as far as bringing them to jealousy? I, I just showed you. Sign of the fish. This second moon coming around, this is its pathway that it will take. It will make the sign of the fish. You can't, you can't tell me that this is an accident, that an asteroid coming into our uh, gravitational field is, uh, how do you say, is, uh, is by accidents or co uh, accident or coincidence. And, and, how, and how does it come in slow enough to take 53 days to do this when our own moon moves around our planet at 29.5 days? It, it's, it's incredible. They all come in uh, screaming at, 
you know, 20, 50,000 miles an hour. And, and I mean, you could, you could take a rock the size of a basketball and bore a hole in the planet, you know, at that speed. And this thing's the size of a bus and it's making the fish symbol. It, we know we're going home. It's a matter of getting as much information out. That maybe I'll say something that another channel will be like, I think this timeline's completely wrong, which I'm okay with you saying that. Um, but this right here made sense to me. And now I'm making a video and we see iron sharpening iron. We should all be working together. Nobody should be at odds with each other. How are you going to deal with that for eternity in heaven? Let me show you again and again. Does it ultimately matter? The answer is no. But I want to show you this just so you can see that at least the full moon is a silly concept. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed, in our solemn feast. What sol Now, if you read that, what do you see? You see new moon. You're like, oh, well, we have to wait for the new moon. But that's not new moon. That's new month. And what do you do when it, the Bible says new month or in the month of? Does that mean it's on the first day or in the month of? Is tabernacles... The great eight days of tabernacles, are they, do they fall in the first month? Yes, the first month in the Bible explains very clear. It's not the first month of Eve. It's the first month from creation. When we look at Jubilees and we look at uh, the seven-year um, Shemitah cycles, uh, they all, both of those, land on September. They all land on September the 15th. Tishri one, they all begin right there. But when it talks like this, it's talking about the month of, in the new month, in the time appointed. When's the time appointed? Tabernacles. When's the last trump? The end of tabernacles. Also trumpets. All right, I'm going to show you this now. Chodesh, 100% of the time, when I see a translation that the, the, the new king, that the King James, not new, the King James version of 1611 has taken liberties upon themselves to call it a new moon when it actually means new month. The word Chodesh does not, will not, and has never meant moon, ever. They use that word for month 254 times, but then took liberties 20 times. And this passage I just showed you is one of those 20 times calling it a new moon. It is not a new moon. It is always month. Chodesh means month. It does not mean moon. All right. The time appointed, again, they're going here and saying, oh, it means full moon. It does not. This is, a, this is a definition, the King James Version of 1611, which they took from Torah. And Torah, I'm going to show you why Torah was also wrong. That's where they got it from. It is not full moon. A kase is a hidden day. They, these kases are appointed times. A hidden day, I'll tell you what, with all with this calendar mumbo jumbo going on, a hidden day is, uh, is very possible. Kase happens two times. It means appointed day. does not mean new moon or full moon or any kind of moon. Now let's read this with that thought in mind. I let me enlarge this. I keep forgetting to enlarge. This person, everybody's associating this right here with a rapture. This is not a rapture verse. None of this screams rapture. Proverbs 7, 16, this woman is a harlot. This woman is a bad wife. As soon as her husband leaves, she begins preparing her bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. And she goes out in the street, and she's trying to find any man. She doesn't care who he is, and she's trying to bring him in. And he, she is telling this man, whoever he is, the stranger, for the good man is not at home. He is gone on a long journey. Whoever, this is Jesus. Good man is Jesus. We know that. He hath taken a bag of money. What's a bag of money? That's the bride. This verse is speaking to the fact that this man is gone. While he's gone with his bride, she is doing everything. In, she is, she's, bring, she's bringing the Antichrist in. She is accept, accepting the Antichrist. This is to the Jew. 
This is to anybody who's going to follow the Antichrist and think that it's Jesus, it's the Messiah. This has nothing to do with the bride, except for he is already gone. He's already gone, taking a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. Another case. There's not just one case. There's several of them. He's coming back on several different appointed times. One for the bride, one for the tribulation saint, one for the Jew at the end of the, the uh the seven-year tribulation, another one at the end of the millennium, 1,000 years. There is a an appointed time, a casse, in each one of those. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. She she, she is looking. You you got to want to follow this guy it, it, to follow him. You got to want to. Like I said, anybody going to hell, if that's what you wanted. God does not want any one of us to go there. But if you're going, you chose that on your own. I've showed you this before, and this is where there's a lot of studies that have been done over uh, hundreds of years, and this is one study, and uh, it makes complete sense as to why they're viewing the sliver moon, full moon. There is no moon involved in any date, and I'm going to show you how I can prove that. It's easy. The moon, new moon calendar was the official calendar of the Greeks. And when Alexander the Great conquered the Middle East in the 4th century BCE, 400, year, 400 BC, the lunar calendar was introduced and was gradually accepted by most of the people. They wrote this thing into Torah 400 years before Jesus came. It was accepted by most of the people except the Hebrew people. They held out. In 172 BCE, that's 230 years later, 230 years later, approximately, King Antic Antichus, Antiochus appointed Menelaus as Jerusalem high priest who introduced the Greek way of educating the young people to completely Hellenize the Hebrew people. He also sent, took him 250 years to, to drag their calendar, the correct one, the one I believe I'm showing you, out of their hands and place the new moon calendar into their hands. And to this day, they still follow a new moon calendar. No, the Jews do not fo follow a full moon calendar. Uh, that's a whole new thing that people began uh, coming up with because, uh, well, they want it to be the full moon. And it's simply not the full moon. I don't even know where that comes from. So what does God say when he says, it's time to rapture them? on tabernacles. Oh, I can't. I can't rapture them on tabernacles. We're going to have to tarry 21 days. That's 21 days. We're going to have to tarry from the September the 15th to um, the 7th of uh, October is uh, that's 22, but 21 exclusive because we're going to the 6th technically. So I hate, this is God. I mean, that's that's rare to hear him speak like that. You only hear it a couple times in the Bible where he hates something. Uh, I For Jacob, I have loved and Esau, I have hated. I hate, I despise, he doubles it up, your feast days. Does that mean the Jews have it right that, that trumpets is in fact uh, happening right now? No, they missed it by 21 days. It's actually... Uh, that's actually going to be the last day of tabernacles, October the 6th at nightfall, becoming October the 7th. And I will not smell your solemn assemblies. These are, these are man-made. These are, these are incorrect. They're happening on the wrong day. They have gone astray because they're worshiping all these things on the wrong day. Uh, I'm not sure why I have that picture. I think, uh, I think I was hopeful that that was going to be the rapture, but I was trying to show you that there's no way they're seeing a sliver moon on the third. And uh, by the time we get to the fourth, the moon's down here by her feet, not under it, but by her feet, which is where they went wrong with the Revelation 12 sign because they saw the sliver. So they were like, oh, that's uh, that's definitely, uh, you know, that's definitely uh, uh, trumpets. And it actually wasn't. It was actually tabernacles. And it was actually the next day when the moon was under her feet on the 24th. So we move forward October the 5th. 
This is where the moon conjuncts with Venus. And this is where I believed that they were going to spot the first sliver of the moon. But they didn't. They spotted it back here. Just like they did in the Revelation 12 sign. They called the Revelation 12 sign. They still do. Once they get a hold of something, you can't drag it out of their hand, out of their uh, crusty little fingers. Well, I'll tell you, they hang on to it. And nobody will let go of it. But the moon... Now, at this point, uh, conjuncts with Venus, which I thought was pretty cool. So, again, trumpets, they will blow trumpets. They will call it Rosh Hashanah, and they will do this for two days. And at the last trump, the last long trump, uh, at nightfall, on the 6th, on the 6th, they will say it's the end of trumpets. We know what happens on the 6th at nightfall. Mary, uh, on the 6th during the day before nightfall, performs her seventh day um, ceremony, cleansing ceremony, after giving birth to a male child. There's 33 more days to go for her. I might want to look at that. What's 33 days after, uh, after the 7th? Does it land? Well, that lands off close to Halloween, doesn't it? That's when I believe the tribulation begins, and uh, November the 11th is when I think that uh, the saints might go marching home. I guess we'll see. All right, Captain Caveman. Uh, Captain Kelly, you got to work on your uh, on your uh, personality skills there, buddy. You have to spend an eternity with me in heaven. How do you do that? Like, like I don't know. I guess I guess we've had troubles with a lot of people here, and a lot of them are brides. And when we get there, I guess it's going to be all forgiven. All right. I mean, I'm we're all forgiven, right? We're we're covered by the blood of Christ. Uh, so I'm going to guess that. I mean, honestly, if 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 uh, Captain Kelly were just to come on here and apologize to everybody for uh, his pride, uh, we would all simply forgive him and. Uh, he might get all of us to email him stuff that we found because he's really good at dissecting things and getting to the root word of things. But he is absolutely terrible about figuring out Chodesh doesn't mean moon. It means mom. Like you could tear apart the Bible from one end to the other. But when it comes to that, that moon thing, boy, you're not touching that one. I'm gonna let that one slide. All right, let me get off of that. Sorry. <laughs> all right. What does it say here? This is when God stopped the sun and the moon. He says the moon twice. And he says, and there was no day like that before it or after it. And the Lord, uh, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of man for the Lord fought for Israel. Okay. Moon, moon. Here we have it in Strong's Concordance. Moon, moon. Let's see what that means. Is it going to say Chodesh? No. 100% of the time, 110% of the time, it will never use the word Chodesh. It will always translate it perfectly to moon, Yarich, or Selim, depending on if you, this is, the, I believe this is the Greek, and then in the Hebrew, it'll say Selim. Moon. It never accidentally translates the moon to Chodesh. Why does it say definition the month? It doesn't cross-reference it here, but it does on Chodesh. It's because they're wrong. Plain and simple. All right. From Game Set, I love this guy. Uh, he does. He, I'm surprised he only has this many subscribers. Uh, he does a really good job. Um, uh, with his videos, I, I, I'm shocked that David the Watchman doesn't have more, that God's Land Down Under doesn't have more. Um, I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing uh, uh, Wackadoodle Samoan Matt. His is growing finally. He's over 2,000. But I, 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 and I said this so many times, you've got to leave that barn full of barley, you aren't helping us financially in any kind of way by just hitting the like button and hitting the subscribe button. The algorithm will jump. David made a video 
he put it on his main YouTube and he has a backup and it clearly says on the backup because I was listening to him this morning that it's just to reserve his videos there so that he can bring them back up. It's just a backup channel. He prayed to God that he could get out the message that he had. He posted the video in his backup and on his main YouTube. On his main YouTube, it didn't hardly get any views. On that back of YouTube with hardly any subscribers whatsoever, God answered that prayer and he got hit at, with over 33,000 views in one night when he slept. He woke up in the morning, he's like, what, what is this? That's what I'm talking about. This is the grain that's stored up. That channel, that backup channel will be solid information for your family and friends, tribulation saints that are left here Commander Kelly will watch our videos at that point after the rapture. I'm kidding, Commander Kelly. Captain Kelly, call you Commander. You've been demoted. You're a captain now. All right. But anyway, uh, please subscribe to this guy's channel. He does some amazing math. And no, I'm not always on the same page with what everybody says. But I think that the underlying mass message should always be that Jesus Christ saves and he's the only way to heaven. That's it. That's all. You don't need anything else. All right. What do we got here? Now, let's say, for example, that I'm wrong, and it is the sliver of the moon. Last year, on September the 15th, it was the Feast of Trumpets. I say that they were correct, because that's where it appears on the timeline. How many days are there in between this Feast of Trumpets and the following Feast of Trumpets? Sun comes up, you give it a name. The sun comes up again, you give it a name. Give it a date. Comes up, it does that. How many times in a year? 365 days in a year, that sun comes up and we name that day. If we say that... It is now Feast of Trumpets, and it is the fourth. You're going to add about 19 days to the calendar. So that year didn't have 365, it had 384. What year do you know of that ever lasted 384 days? It didn't. Last year, they were correct. September 15th was the Feast of Trumpets. This year, it was the Feast of Trumpets. What we're about to see is the last blow of the shofar on the great eighth day, the last day of uh, tabernacles. They're going to blow it, and that's the day Jesus was named and circumcised. That's the day Israel was invaded. All right, and just to drive my point home about this, on October the 7th in 2023, Israel was invaded. On this date, one day simply prior to this, it was the last quarter. That means it's on its way to darkness. It's the last quarter of it. It's going to start brand new uh, in seven days from this on the 15th or 16th. No, new moon, 14th. In, on October 14th, it will start with a new moon. It'll be dark. And then the 15th, seven days later, they'll see the first sliver, right? So... In order to follow the moon, this is what everybody's saying when they keep talking about the moon. In order to follow the moon, this year, Israel will have been attacked. Israel will have been attacked. To get back to that last quarter, they, they will have been attacked on October the 24th. October the 24th. That's when they were attacked. If we're going by the sliver moon, full moon, all these moon calendars, that's how long it was. You see how ridiculous that sounds? Israel was attacked on October the 7th. One year later is October the 7th. The sliver of the moon back here, the, uh, the, on that day, it was the last quarter, meaning it was a half a moon. Going to a dark moon. This year, the last quarter will be October the 24th. It's ridiculous. It doesn't work. The moon never will work. And Israel was invaded on October the 7th. And the anniversary of that is coming up here in a few days, October the 7th. No moons involved. All right. Now, 
like I said, Steve Fletcher came out with a, with a really cool video. He says they don't have to meet on trumpets. They don't have to meet on atonement. Everybody has to show up on tabernacles, and they will blow the shofar on the last day of tabernacles. We all have to be there for this, all of us. I think it says in here somewhere that all men, women, children, and strangers have to show up for here. They do not have to show up for trumpets or Shavuot, which is the day of atonement. Let's see here. Where do I go? Now, when you read this again, if it does, if you take the new moon out of the equation and it says in the new month, that means the entire month is open game, not just the first day, the entire month. And then what do we see as we go forward to the sixth at nightfall becoming the seventh when Jesus is named and uh, named and circumcised? It's still in the first month. That's what it's saying in that passage, in the first month. Steve Fletcher. And Moses commanded them, saying, at the end of every seven years, in the solemn solemn, solemnity of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacles, when ye, all Israel is to come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel, in their hearing, gather the people together, men, women, children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear. Thank you, Steve Fletcher. That was pretty good. Captain Kelly, change your ways. When you guys send me stuff about him, this is, this is exactly what I think about when you send me stuff about him. It's as important as this. The Amazon River runs for a thousand miles. Wait. Sorry. The Amazon River runs for thousands of miles. At some points, it runs through areas of the rainforest that are almost untouched and have been barely explored. Because of the porous limestone in those areas, the river water leaks through the stone and travels deep into the earth and forms underground pools almost a mile below the surface. Over thousands of years, small, blind, transparent fish have lived and evolved in these pools. These fish have never seen the sun or surface and have never been seen by a human eye. These fish care more about what Kelly says than I do. <laughs> All right. Listen, Kelly. Stop. Whatever you're doing, stop. I've been repossessing cars for a long time. The reason I was so successful at it is it takes me about 2.5 seconds to determine what somebody is capable of doing just by the look in their eye and the act and the, and the movement of their bodies. Um, what I see is you're insecure about your own salvation. And I would suggest that you simply pray to Jesus and say to cover your sins. There is nothing else you need. You don't need to tear anybody else down. Uh, to solidify your your uh, salvation. You don't need to judge anyone else. It's not your place, not even a little bit. And uh, if I were to go in and take time to tear apart some of the things you say, like my posse and I are going to heaven, everybody else that's not in my group is not, that's absolutely insane. Are you serious right now? And then... Um, your insecurities are, are playing out live on screen. And unfortunately, there's a, a group of people that are following you. And I don't understand why, honestly. Um, you need to check with the Bible uh, on what it says about railing against your fellow man. And uh, I don't know. Just accept Christ, uh, Kelly, Captain Kelly. Just That's all you need. Just accept Christ. And uh, you don't need anything else. So, all right. Let's see. What else? Go to a quiet. Remember to subscribe to those channels. Um, and like, comment, share them. The reason I say that is because we're leaving uh, the storehouse full. The storehouse is slap full of grain. This is the stuff that the people need during the tribulation because they, we've had seen the seven years of plenty. Trust me, I have never seen as much 
people uh, tear apart and discover things like they have been here lately, you know, and uh, even if we've got it wrong, like Captain Kelly, it's not the moon. And if you are as good as dissecting Bible verses as you are, I can't believe you even decided to go against God and adopt the full moon. That's that's literally remember, God it has to come on a day that makes the Jews jealous. It has to appear to the Jews to be trumpets. But to us, as we go, we're going to know it's the day we get renamed and we get our new bodies. That's the point of Jesus being circumcised and named uh, at nightfall on the 6th. The day his mother, during the daytime, before nightfall came, she cleansed herself. Her seven-day ceremony. I mean, simple. Tear this apart. Of course, I'm not going to bring your salvation into question or your Holy spirit -ness. Holy Spiritativeness, because uh, I would that would be absolutely wrong. I think you're a really good researcher, and I think you need to spend uh, a little less time talking about me and more talking about Jesus and investigate this Chodesh thing. I'm telling you, you won't find it. Uh, accidentally mistranslated is Yarich anywhere. It won't happen. 254 times translated as month, 20 times as new moon. They got it wrong 20 times. And if you'll do a little research like I have, because that's why uh, that that's what I do. That's the piece of the puzzle I bring to the table. Um, you'll see that I'm right. And I'd be so happy if you made an apology video, a genuine one, not one where, you know, yeah, I apologize to everybody, but I don't regret not not that half-hearted apology, an actual apology to everybody for judging everyone because you have really you have no right. And then. Uh, after that, we'll, we'll, we'll accept you with open arms, man, and we'll help you research stuff and look at stuff with you, you know, and try to figure this out. Of course, we don't have much more time. I literally think that um, at sunset tomorrow, what's great about God's Land Down Under is he literally, him and David, um, uh, David made a video, but uh, God's Land, Brett over at God's Land Down Under did a live uh, to encompass the time of sunset in Israel today. And I believe he did it yesterday as well. And I think that's so awesome that he did that. And I hope he does it tomorrow. And I hope he does it the next day because I think we're going to be raptured out of here. We don't know the day and the hour. Well, if you don't know the day, you automatically don't know the hour. I mean, you can say it's at sunset today or tomorrow, but tech, by, by, by technicality, if you don't know it's today or tomorrow, you don't know the hour. It could be this hour today or that hour tomorrow. You don't know. So we don't technically know the day or the hour, but it could be tomorrow at sunset in Israel, and it could be the next day at sunset in Israel. But one thing is for sure, the Jews are viewing this as the piece of trumpets. The Jews uh, are off by 21 days, which brings to mind, obviously, uh, that the the prince of, of per or the was it the, the prince of Persia held up the angel. And then Michael came to help her. So I, I'm paraphrasing. I don't know the whole story. I know the story. I just don't know how it's worded exactly. And then he shows up to where he is needed 21 days late. So um, we are in 21 days of Terry here, though it's not late, actually, because we were never supposed to go home on trumpets. We were supposed to go home on the last day of Tabernacles. So though it appears to have tarried, from what we thought trumpets was, it actually isn't. That's why that verse is so confusing. Though it tarry, it actually doesn't. Though I'm late, I'm not actually late. I'm right on time. And it's true. Um, it's not trumpets. It's the last day of atonement. I mean, sorry, last day. I said, did I say atonement last time? Last day of tabernacles. So I will misspeak and then listen to my video and go, really? You just said that? But I think you're all used to it because... Uh, People are like, he meant tabernacles because you stopped correcting me a year ago. <laughs> so you've accepted it. All right, YouTube. Repo Man 64, please go to a quiet. We are out of time. Everybody, have you seen all the videos? We're all pumping videos out. We're out of time. Please go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. And accept the Lord into your heart. Could we be seeing this view right here? Tomorrow at sunset Israel time or the next day sunset Israel time. Is this the view we could be seeing as we are carried away from this place, taken away, hidden in our tabernacle, in our 
in our mansion for a little while, seven years, until the indignation, until because we probably don't want to see uh, what's happening on Earth. Like I used to say to people that uh, we're all worried about the trees, I'm like, and the animals and all this. I'm like, you think that we're rough on this planet? Wait to see what God does to it. What are you talking about? I'm like, oh, he's, he's going to annihilate this place. <laughs> no, he's not. He loves this world. I'm like, yeah, but he's going to, he did it once before. He flooded the earth. No, oh, that, that's not true. I'm like, they're finding seashells on the top of Mount Everest. Are you kidding me? How do you think that happened? Did somebody carry him up there? No, the world flooded. 1,656 years after he created it. So, all right, YouTube, we will chat with you again later hopefully in heaven soon i look forward to your live tomorrow brett at god's land down under uh to be on there everybody was there every one of my brothers and sisters were there on his live at sunset israel time um showing their their unity to uh to looking forward to this rapture and so that's uh, that's that's literally all we're looking forward to, all of us, you know. So, all right, we'll chat with you again later.